So after we have assessed that, what are the symptoms we want to look for in narcolepsy? Absolutely. So this is the one condition where uh, besides uh, excessive daytime sleepiness, hypersomnolence, uh, as the sine qua non, really, of the disease, you cannot really make a diagnosis of narcolepsy without daytime sleepiness as a fundamental symptom. Besides daytime sleepiness, there are at least a, um, uh, four or five other symptoms that I think are useful for clinicians to appraise. The, for, the first and foremost is a cataplexy. Now, cataplexy is really a, a very unique uh, condition in which Patients often describe uh, a loss of muscle tone that is often gradual when they hear a funny joke or, or they get surprised. Uh, usually positive emotions tend to uh, um, bring on this uh, uh, episode. And the patients may have a sagging of, of their jaw or um, may, may slur their speech. Uh, or they may even find that it's hard for them to maintain uh, their postural muscle tone. And it goes on a fairly gradual for maybe a few seconds up to a minute, not, typically not more than, than a minute. Um, so cataplexy is, is really what helps differentiate between the two types of narcolepsy, something we'll go into in a little bit. How easy is it for physicians to recognize that somebody has cataplexy? Is it easy for them to see this, or can it be quite difficult? It is extremely difficult, and I'll tell you why. Um, I, I'm just curious, among everyone here, how many of you have witnessed cataplexy in your patients? Sure, I've I seen think, that. I think all of us have, because we're dealing with this we're very dealing commonly, with it. <laughs> but I, I would right? say that most physicians have never seen it. Most physicians have not, and I've actually um, surveyed this uh, um, not too long ago, and in a group of 50, one person had actually, served, uh, actually witnessed it. So it's hard to validate, it's hard to corroborate. Patients don't uh, present this uh, with, with cataplexy when they come in to see you. If you see it, it's, it's really helpful, but um, it, it requires validation. And things that can look like cataplexy are often not cataplexy. And so I think this is really the, the critical point of really validating what the patient perceives as being abnormal. How and about in children, uh, Karen? Is it uh, different cataplexy in children than in adults? Yeah, so um, a subset of children can have what's called static cataplexy. Or, um, so basically it's not triggered by emotion. They just look like they're hypotonic. Their face looks droopy. Their eyes may be partially closed. Their mouth may be hanging open. They may even have somewhat that looks like an ataxic gait, but their you know, neurologic exam is normal. So it's a unique presentation in children. And um, to add to your point, I think what I found is having parents bring in videos of events of what they, they believe to be cataplexy can be very helpful. Now, what about the other symptoms, Alon, besides cataplexy? Besides cataplexy, uh, the next symptom to look for is uh, sleep paralysis. Now, sleep paralysis is described as the inability to move, almost complete paralysis, with the exception of breathing and eye movements, that occurs at uh, typically at the offset of sleep when the patient wakes up. And it's rather disruptive and disturbing to the patient. They, they often they are quite anxious by it. Um, the good thing is that it goes away within a few minutes. Now, uh, sleep paralysis is not unique to narcolepsy. Certainly, we have isolated sleep paralysis as a parasomnia, as an abnormal behavior or sensory phenomenon during sleep or sleep-wake transition, but it is common in sleep deprivation and it's common, very common in, in a, uh, narcolepsy. Um, hallucinations, let me mention that there are some hypnagogic and hypnopompic hallucinations in, in a narcolepsy. The hypnopompic hallucinations occur as uh, visual disruptive, uh, visual hallucinations when the patient wakes up. The hypnagogic hallucinations occur when the patient transitions into sleep. Now, they're not typical uh, dreamlike experiences that you and I probably experience, but they're rather abrupt uh, onset into, into REM sleep. And the experiences are rather visually uh, disturbing uh, to the patient. Um, 
So besides uh, the hallucinatory experiences, sleep paralysis, and cataplexy, one of the fundamental issues that occur in narcolepsy, which is related indirectly to the orexin hypocretin deficiency, is besides the inability to maintain uh, sleep during the day, there is an, uh, sorry, inability to maintain wakefulness in, in, in the day, there is inability to maintain sleep during the night. So insomnia, severe, disrupted the sleep uh, onset and sleep maintenance insomnia is very common in narcolepsy. You would think otherwise. You would think that those th individuals would fall asleep and sleep soundly during, during the night, but it's quite the opposite. So this is really a 24-hour-a-day uh, disorder, right? Your patients have the sleepiness and the cataplexy during the daytime, but then they have these uh, abnormal REM sleep phenomena at night and the disrupted sleep at night. And uh, uh, is it, uh, you rightly mentioned that uh, sleep paralysis is more common upon awakening in the morning, but if you get it at the beginning of a night, is that more specific for narcolepsy? I, I, I believe it, there, there are some studies that demonstrate that uh, sleep paralysis at the onset of sleep is more specific to narcolepsy phenotype as opposed to sleep paralysis in the setting of sleep deprivation that usually occur uh, in the morning. Right, yeah, typically we, uh, we don't have REM sleep at the beginning of the night, do we, in normal individuals, and, uh, but we do have it at the end of the night, so if sleep's disrupted, we may be more likely to get that sleep paralysis when we wake up in the morning, but if you get abnormal REM at night and you get sleep paralysis or hallucinations as you're falling asleep at night, you know, that uh, really is a little bit more indicative for narcolepsy. Okay, well, look, uh, thank you very much, Alon.